There are a lot of great reasons to think about belt 3D printing when it comes to props and swords and cosplay. It's the only form of rapid prototyping in which the parts that come out of the machine are larger than the machine itself. It has other unique properties when angled printing is combined with a bed. The angled printing allows many geometries to be printed without support or with greatly reduced support. The bed system allows much faster printing of pieces in volume by eliminating the need to share bed space with multiple parts. At the same time, it eliminates the risk of a print failure destroying an entire batch. I'm going to dig into each of these qualities while showing you how to use a few of Kirimoto's newest features to get the most out of your Belt 3D printer. For this video, I mocked up a couple of simple models to better illustrate Kirimoto's features that are Belt specific. I'm going to jump right in with a couple of the most important things you need to know about Belt 3D printing. If you know the old adage that the first layer is the most important in uh, 3D printing, then what you'll notice is that in belt printing, almost every layer might have a first layer, and you'll see where it contacts the belt down here. That's a blessing and a curse. Um, it's a blessing because the belt acts as a bit of a support structure, and that's what it makes it possible to print objects like cubes of any size totally hollow without any supports. That's not possible um, with traditional top-down printing. Uh, it's a curse because the belt is flexible and um, unlike a, a build plate, um, when the nozzle is drawing up on the part, it can actually lift it up against the bed or up against the belt and that can lead to print failures. So you, know, you need to anchor your part down in a lot of cases to get a better print, especially for small regions, small cross sections. So how do we deal with that in uh, Kirimoto? There are a couple things. One is uh, this thing called a part anchor. And if you put a part anchor in um, and slice it, you'll see that it has this lead in right here. And that anchor is a way of anchoring the front of the part as it's built to the bed. Um, just literally think of it as a way of, of uh, you know, the part pulling against that as it's printing away. That anchor is going to hold it. The other thing that you can do is you can pin the sides to the bed. And the way you do that is with a brim on the sides of the part. So I'm going to turn the part anchor off and turn the brim on in this case and show you what that looks like. So in this case, it adds sort of these, these tabs on the side. These break off really easily, don't affect the quality of the print. Um, in most cases, pretty easy to snip off. So that's actually super useful. I'm going to load up a different part to show you some other features of uh, using that system. So um, here's a good example of something where if I just slice it and take a look at what the um, the brims do on the side of it here, that seems a bit excessive. Now it, it does come off really easily, but um, and it will protect the part when it's printing. But if I want to get away with less of that, there's a setting where you can put a threshold in for the brim. And if the cross section is less than that number, then it will only put the brims in that in that area. So for you know areas like this where you have a small lead in or a small tail or just the nose, it'll minimize the um, where the brims are showing up in this part. And this, this is actually a pretty interesting part because you can print the entire thing completely hollow with no supports. So if you look for areas where things just magically appear in the air, that's not going to print. But the way this one is laid out, you can actually print this entire thing. Uh, and you can print it really fast that way. So this is a really interesting aspect of built printing. Let's talk about print quality and how this is something that you need to think about differently in belt 3D printing. Typically, surfaces like the top and the bottom, um, the quality of those are controlled by layers. And since layers are printed in a bias, there are no top and bottom layers. They become your head and tail of the print. And while it's important in some cases, it's far less important. These solid layers are now anything which is natively on a 45 degree bias, which is very unusual in normal parts. So the way to think about your print quality is really in terms of shells. And the shells are going to be your dominant support structure since shells are printed on top of other shells at an angle. Um, and so if you have print quality issues, you need to have at least three shells, maybe four. Infill is somewhat less important. Um, these little green things you see here are deltas between the layers that are really important in traditional top-down printing. They add a lot to print time. And so in belt printing, you can eliminate them in a lot of cases. And the way you do that, in Kirimoto at least, is you go to Expert and you set a min solid to something like 10 cubic millimeters. And when you do that and then re-slice it, you'll notice that they disappear. That will vastly increase your print uh, speed 
uh, without really uh, suffering on their print quality uh, much. For some of these long spans, if you have uh, a thinner number of shells or you know, really curved surfaces, you'll need them, or you can add some linear infill, and that will give it sort of the vertical structure uh, or support that it needs for those um, more complex shapes. So I hope that helps in terms of thinking about that. It is a little bit different, and you'll need to experiment a little bit to find out how that works best for you. Now we get to one of the truly unique aspects of belt printing, and that is the ability to repeat regions of a part or an entire part. Um, in Kirimoto, this is enabled through an expert option down here called Loop Layers, and if you look at the tooltip, it'll tell you how to format that. And so you slice it and just say, I want to repeat, say, this region to that region. And so what you do is you find the beginning of the region that you want for your loop and you find the last area and it's an area that should you know be repeatable obviously and so in this case it's 34 to 62 and what we'll do is take that under expert and put it under loop layers 34 to 62 and then the number of repeats that I want so let's say I'm gonna put uh, two in here and there's a little something special about uh, what happens when you put in a two for repeating this section right here and also how you come up with what sections you want to repeat. Um, so in this case, uh, that lead-in graphic that I had showed you some slices on the side and some math behind it, but you know the rule of thumb is if you need something to precisely uh, repeat, you're going to have to have 3x the length of it in order to get a clean segment that doesn't overlap the front or overlap the back in any way. So with that, you're just going to export your G-code, download it, and put it on the printer and I'm going to show you what this looks like when it comes out. So the seemingly unexpected result there is to get five segments when you do a loop of two and that's because two is two in addition to the one loop. The assumption is any loop is going to repeat more than once. There's a special value of zero which is infinite which basically means you have to stop the printer in order to stop the loops and that's usually when you're doing an entire part repeat. And uh, you can do that just by putting in, you know, zero to the number of layers, um, dash something, and get that many parts printed out. And the lead-in video that I had showed you know, essentially an infinite print of a bunch of two-segment uh, click obricos. Um, and so that's how you're able to spawn your robot army uh, for the future. I prepared this little diagram to show you um, if you're planning to do a repeating part, the math that you have to do to get it precise. If you look at these lines here, these correspond with the uh, direction of the layers in a part. And it's not the same as layers in a, in a bottom-up, like Core XY print or traditional print. In the relationship between the direction that it's traveling down the bed and the direction of the layers, it's a 45 degree angle. So while your layer height might be 0.2, the distance between the layers in the Z is actually 0.2 times the square root of 2. And so in order to get a perfect repeat, you have to multiply, or you have to basically make the segment area between these two things that are going to repeat a multiple of your layer height times the square root of 2. It's a little bit geeky, but if you want really good repeats, you're going to have to keep that in mind. Supports are always important. Um, in belt printing, it is somewhat less important because there are fewer areas where you need supports. For example, in this part, you need none. I'm going to show you how to add them and then show you where you might need them. This works just like it does in any other kind of uh, 3D printing. You place your supports, you do your slices, and they show up. What's different is that you don't really need to have the gap layer height the way you do in bottom-up printing because your join is always on an angle or on a bias and that just inherently makes it easy to snap off. So I'm going to show you a part where you actually might really need this. So with Benchy, the areas that we really want to care about are under the back of the uh, boat down here and under up here. And the way you can sort of figure that out just by slicing it, it's a little bit less intuitive than just sort of top-down stuff here, is you look for the parts that print um, almost in the air. So if you go to the bottom of the part and you start to drag it up through here, you'll see these uh, rise really quickly. And that real quick rise is an indicator it probably needs to be supported. And then the other area, it, when you go up here, is that you'll notice right at the top, it's going to sort of print in the air. And that print in the air right there up here needs support. And these two areas um, in uh, belt printing really are the areas that with Benchy you have to support. It's uh, really not important anywhere else, but it is critical right there. And so it's pretty simple just to go in and add support structures in these areas. 
Um, the automatic support structure generation for these faces right now is not as good. It's an area of active development, but it's not too hard to go in and, and sort of place these where you want them. There is something you should never ever do in belt 3D printing, and it is this. There is no reason ever to have parts share the same Z. This is just going to waste a lot of print time where it's going to lift the head and move between parts. And it's also greatly going to increase the chances of failure where the failure of one print sort of bleeds into the other. And what you're going to want to do instead when you're doing a layout is you're going to want to stagger them like this or stagger them like this if you're worried about wearing out your belt, which, you know, it's actually an issue. The belt will wear out uh, where a bed won't. And so this is a, a layout feature which is going to be coming to Kirimoto soon that will space them appropriately for faster printing and for preservation of your belt. Finish up by reiterating that the belt adhesion is the most important part here and under base settings you have the ability to slow down any uh, filament extrusion against the bed with the shell speed here and you can also increase the flow rate to let it bond a little bit better and you can see that because it's a different color um, and you'll see that in the brims and the anchors there's a lot of opportunities to anchor your part to the bed another way to think about why you can do uh, belt printing without supports as much is if you take the same part and bring it into a normal sort of printer and you slice it. Um, you can see how it's sliced this way, but if you take the part itself and rotate it 45 degrees, there you go, and look at this here, then you can sort of see how it doesn't need supports because the belt acts as a support against one side of it here. And if you look at it this way, obviously you don't need supports. This geometry is very interesting. Um, there's a lot more to explore here. I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to your comments and feedback below. Thanks for watching.